metal wings to fly won't take you to the stars. Use the metal for a boat and you won't sail too far. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret pink code, pink code, Signs can be tricky, it can overheat your brain. Signs can be hard to chew, each bite can be a pain. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret pink code. something, Daco? When I said that I needed more space, I didn't mean this much. Space is the final frontier, Wally, and we have a goal. Our goal is to find water somewhere else in our solar system before anyone else does. I found water <laughs> in our faucet. <laughs> he has a point, though. What good is water in the void of space? You should show more respect for the most important thing on Earth. Water is one of the most beneficial substances on our planet. It covers 70% of the Earth's surface, but 97% of that is salt water from the oceans. Only about 3% is fresh. That's the stuff we drink. Holy carrots, just 3%, huh? Guess maybe I should start drinking ocean water. Listen up, guys. We are not looking for water to drink. We're looking for water out in space because it's absolutely our best chance of finding alien life. Whoopee! Why would there be aliens? Scientists believe that life on Earth could have started in the water. They think it might have been helped along by electrical charges in the water. So it's possible life can start on other planets in the same way. Earth used a combination of methane, ammonia, and hydrogen in our ancient atmosphere. With a little electric discharge, amino acids can be formed, which create proteins, and proteins create life as we know it. Water doesn't just provide a good place for proteins to form, but also protects them. And water can help animals' bodies, including our own, regulate temperature in the same way clothes do. Fluctuations in our Earth's weather may seem extreme, but really, water helps keep a lot of things regulated. Water helps keep our bodies cool when it's hot outside, and it always helps to stay hydrated. In the same way, a pond or a lake that freezes on top is actually helping to preserve the life beneath the surface. The fish inside stay nice and cozy. It's wearing a hula hoop. No, no. See, these are planetary rings, and this is where we're going. You're hunting for water on Saturn? Not quite. We're going to one of the many moons of Saturn. It's called Enceladus, and it's one of Saturn's smaller moons. It's only about 300 miles in diameter. Encela, what now? Why don't we just try the moon? I hear that's a lot closer. We're going to a moon, just not our moon. <laughs> Though Saturn has many interesting moons, Enceladus is especially unique. Its surface is almost entirely white due to the fact that it's covered in what we believe is watery ice. The icy surface makes it extra reflective, which means that despite its small size, we can see it extra brightly in the night sky. Wow! <laughs> awesome! Look at this snow! We can make a sweet fort! <laughs> oh! Sorry, friends, but I believe making a snow fort would be impossible on this moon. The temperature is more than 300 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. 
that also means none of you can move the ice or, incidentally, remove your spacesuits. Uh, uh, even my horns are frozen. What could possibly live here? Nothing up here, but below us, who knows? Scientists have observed that though the surface may be several miles of ice, beneath the surface might be much warmer. Can you imagine? And if it's warmer, there might be water underneath. And if there's water, there might be the very foundation for life. Oh my! Come look! My seismograph detected flows beneath the surface! This is amazing! This proves that there's an underground ocean! <laughs> huh? Run, Wally! Hurry! Get over here! Go! Let's go! Huh? Ah! Good morning, Wally. Oh, what happened? What happened is that you discovered <laughs> one of Enceladus's geysers. And these were found originally by the Cassini probe when it flew by this moon back in uh, 2005. Splendid. I'm late to the party. Now, can we go home? We can't leave yet. <laughs> we had to be proper scientists and send a probe into its underground ocean. And that probe is us. Well, what now? That's right. We're more than 60 miles beneath the surface of Enceladus. We should be basking in the glory that we're on a moon where no astronomer has ever been before. I'd rather be basking in the sun. Specifically, on the Earth. I still don't understand. What's so special about this place is water? It just looks like water to me. Water is called H2O because of its chemical makeup. It has two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. These molecules are attracted to each other, and when a bunch of these molecules gather, it makes a liquid, water. They change their position a lot, which is why liquids can move and flow. But when the temperature gets too cold, specifically below freezing point or 32 degrees Fahrenheit, they snap together in a hexagonal shape. This way, they're no longer a liquid, but a solid, ice. The spaces between the hexagons means that ice is less dense than liquid water. That's why it floats. In its liquid form, water can reflect electromagnetic waves. Hmm, maybe that's why my cell phone doesn't work when I'm scuba diving. Anyway. Water protects us from so many things, whether it's in liquid or solid form. Do you see it, everyone? It's all the ingredients for life! Well, I see a terrifying darkness, but, you know, same thing, I guess. <laughs> we won't be able to see life with the naked eye. But if we can get something under a microscope, we just might be able to find even the tiniest of cells. Even that would be a huge breakthrough. Huge breakthrough. <laughs> Aliens, alien life outside our ship. Holy carrots. Here, calamari, calamari. I think there's something watching as we invade their planet! We have to get out of the special table! Can you hear me? Yeah, in a sec. Here, fishy. Here, fishy. Aha! Gotcha, you little alien fish! <laughs> Are you crazy? Crash is still out there. 
Amazing! We learned so much, but so much is unknown. That whole finding life thing might be bigger than we thought. Good morning, Wally. Daco said that you actually discovered a geyser out there on Enceladus. But then he said, actually, this probe called Cassini flew by in 2005 and found it first. Fabulous. <laughs> Still late to the party. Huh? But wait! We were in the ocean, and Crash went out to catch it. Uh, there was a squid. Well, not a squid, but a scary thing. And there was a giant, uh, thing. Hmm? Don't know. But while you were sleeping, we went in the ocean. All we found was water samples, but we gave those to Daco, who's checking them out now. We didn't find any squids or giants, just murky water. It was cold. If none of that really happened, then that means I understand. Ah, ah, there's life on this moon! Huh? Mm -hmm. Ooh. It's not as exciting, but at least it's not attacking us. It's incredible! This is Nobel Prize stuff! You see? We found life out in space! So amazing! Wally, we need to head back to that moon right now and get more samples! Impossible! Where'd it go? Uh, where did what go, Daco? Enceladus! It's gone! An explosion? Or a meteor? It doesn't matter, I guess. But the whole moon is... It's just... All of it... Gone. Don't be it sad, Daco. Hey, you want to look that for water? Something, I bet we can it? find water in the kitchen! <sighs> huh? Enceladus is a real moon of Saturn, though it's one of the smallest. This episode was fictional. Enceladus is doing just fine and definitely hasn't exploded. Scientists think there might actually be an ocean of icy water on its surface, though. And who knows what may lurk beneath? <laughs>